All right, so now we have to discuss the final case where when we have eigenvalues that are mixed with sign. So for example, lambda 1 here is 4, lambda 2 here is negative 1, the eigenvectors are 5, 2, and the here for negative 1, it's 0, 1. So we do the same thing. Okay, let's first write e to the 4t and e to the negative t. But let's draw the xy plane and draw the half lines. So for here, it's 5, 2. So when x is equal to 5, y is 2. When x is equal to 5, y is 2. So the point is like here. So just a rough sketch, okay? So we draw the half line corresponding to the eigenvalue 4. That's crucial. Then 0, 1. When x is equal to 0, y is 1. So it's still the y-axis. So let's delete this and draw it from a different color. That's the half line. Still the equilibrium point is 0, 0. And this half line is for the eigenvalue negative 1. Now tell me what are the arrows behavior. e to the 40 when time gets large. e to the 40 gets large. So along this half line the arrows are moving away from the equilibrium point, right? Okay, and e to the negative t, when t gets large, e to the negative t approach to zero. So the arrows are getting towards the equilibrium points along this half line, right? Because that's the half line corresponding to the eigenvalue negative one. Good, now what is the rest of the trajectories? So that's the question. Now, where do they start? Where do they, where do these solutions start? Now, here's, here's what happens. They neither approach or neither leave the equilibrium point. What happens is, so here, they follow the pattern of the arrow. See here, you start from away here for negative one. You come here, but then you change the route because when time gets large, okay, when time gets large, you approach to infinity. Okay, so that's exactly what happens. You start from away, but when time goes to infinity, it approaches to infinity. Okay, so this is the behavior. Now I will explain you why in a quick second. So this is the behavior of the rest of the trajectories. Here's what happens. So your solution is a combination of both of them, right? So let's write it down. e to the 4t and e to the negative t. Now when time is large, time is small, my bad. When time is very small in the beginning, who is the dominant function out of e to the 4t and e to the negative t? Think close. Think very carefully. Who is the dominant? e to the negative t. Do you agree? e to the negative t graph is like this. Oh, come on. Okay. This is e to the negative t. e to the 4t graph is like this. So see, this is t axis, this is t axis. When time is small, e to the 4t is small number, right? What's wrong with this pen? Okay. When time is small, e to the 4t is small. But when time is small, e to the negative t is very large. So where do you start? You start from very large. So you come from here when time is small. So this is the beginning of the time. Now, when time gets larger, what happens? When time moves on, e to the negative t is going to kept forgetting because this part will approach to zero. But e to the 40, when time moves on, it keep on getting larger and larger and larger, growing and growing. e to the negative t is getting small, e to the 40 is getting large. So that is exactly what happens with this curve, right? You start from away. When time moves on, you bend, okay? You change the direction because no longer e to the negative t is dominant, e to the 4t is dominant. So now the values are getting extremely large. You are going back again away from the origin. So that is the exact behavior. You start far away and now the e to the negative t dominance goes away because time gets large, then you approach infinity. That is exactly the behavior. Okay, so that's the explanation. So this is how you sketch the graph, um, sketch the face portrait when you have mixed eigenvalues. Now the stability. So you neither you approach or neither you away. The mixed behavior. So the equilibrium point zero zero we call semi-stable equilibrium point because it has the both mixed behavior. 
Now we gave give it this a name. We call the zero zero equilibrium point is a saddle point. Is a saddle point. When both eigenvalues are positive, it's a repeller. When both eigenvalues are negative, it's an attractor. Now here, it's a saddle when you have mixed eigenvalues, negative and positive mixed eigenvalues. Okay, but it's semi-stable. So that's the explanation. That is how you sketch graphs. Okay. All right, then. Yeah, thank you very much.